so the country explodes with concern for racism, and who steps in to fill the role of the holiest high priest? The problem of racism is before us, threatening our very existence. Professor Ibram X. Kendi. Kendi goes from obscure academic wowing retired librarians on C-SPAN to Oprah's muse. I hear all the books are sold out. This man was like born to make boomer TV host swoon. Good morning, thanks for being with us. You're America's leading scholar on anti-racism. Kendi tweeted that to be black in America is to walk in the valley of the shadow of pain and death. Well, you give people a lot to think about, Ibram Kendi, so bravo to you. Yes, so many deep, deep thoughts. Thoughts that at least have the appearance of being profound. Racism is at the same time terminal and curable. Terminal and curable. And in applauding you, we applaud ourselves. For more on that metaphor and much else, please read How to Be an Anti-Racist. Kendi now charges tens of thousands of dollars an hour to help companies operationalize his cutting edge anti-racist tech. And he's found a particularly enthusiastic customer in this company. And on behalf of the NBA, I'm honored to tip off an anti-racist teach-in. We have really made a commitment to educating ourselves. Of course, I want to send a special shout out to the MBA and before for collaborating with us. Okay, okay, MBA. You really want to be Kendi's version of anti-racist? I got you. Let's start with this. To love capitalism is to end up loving racism. To love racism is to end up loving capitalism. Kendi calls capitalism and racism the conjoined twins. Marx recognized the birth of the conjoined twins. Capitalism is essentially racist. Racism is essentially capitalist. Kendi predicts the twins are in for a um, unnatural reckoning. They were birthed together from the same unnatural causes, and they shall one day die together from unnatural causes. So you want to be anti-racist? Step one, convert the NBA into a socialist collective. Making a multi-billion dollar profit-maximizing global business empire not capitalist is going to take a while. How about today, as an act of good faith, you just uh, immediately liquidate Kevin Durant, the skeletal sniper, the best player on the planet, and also the league's chief innovator in ways to make money off the court. Durant has evolved beyond endorsements. He's taken ownership, starting his own venture investment fund and plowing parts of his salary into Postmates non-fungible tokens, drone startups, and then reinvesting his earnings back into his hometown. This center is it's not just for today, it's just for you know empowering these kids to believe in themselves and know that it's more than what they see right now. A lanky, lonely kid who had to evade pit bull attacks to get to his high school gym has become a master of capital and an inspiration to others. See so many guys that want to do more things with their lives outside of just playing the game of basketball. I feel like all my brothers in the NBA are entrepreneurs, you know, they're creating jobs for people in their city. Yeah, sorry, that's all extremely problematic. So I don't know how someone can truly be anti-racist and a supporter of capitalism. The Kennedy philosophy says Kevin's capitalist empire is a grand act of racism, and it's gonna need to die from uh, <laughs> unnatural causes. Uh, next step, NBA. We're gonna need you to fix your glaring racial inequity problem. Right now, NBA is 75% black. Let's run that number through Kennedy's cutting edge formula for identifying racism. Take a policy. Calculate the racial composition of the people it affects. If that policy doesn't affect all racial groups exactly equally, you've got what Kendi calls inequity. Racial inequity is when two or more racial groups are not standing on approximately equal footing. 
there's racial inequity. Racial inequities. Racial inequity. Racial inequity and injustice. And inequities are everywhere. And he says inequity can only have one cause. If a policy is leading to inequity, then it's racist. And his anti-racism requires forcibly ratcheting those groups into equal sizes. Anti-racist policies yield racial equity. Equity and injustice for all. To equity and justice. So applying Kendi's super simple mathematics of anti-racism, the NBA has to be 25% white, 25% Latino, 25% Asian, and just 25% black. Anti-racism is going to require a mass layoff of black basketball players. So stop. You're thinking. This is infinitely moronic. It took a couple years for the NBA to formally desegregate. Earl Lloyd, the very first black person to play an NBA game, suffered racist white fans spitting on him from the stands. But he found in his teammates a post-racial sanctuary. And how did the team respond to you? As, you know, if, 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 if they think you can help, they don't. You know the problem. <clears throat> Competitive juices knows no color. The NBA realized the civil rights dream. Individuals being judged purely on merit. An open competition with global superstardom and a lifetime's worth of wealth at stake. Guys like Russell, Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron proved they are the best. And they just so happen to be black. Sorry, Professor Kendi doesn't care how we get to a particular racial inequity. He only cares about outcomes. We should be defining policies as racist based on their outcome. Defining a policy as racist based on its outcome. I'm serious, guys. He really only cares about outcomes. My sort of definition of racism is, is, is based on outcomes. And Kendi's philosophy demands the NBA go on a hiring spree of white players. Really, any white players. Achieving an equitable outcome is all that matters. So you really want to be anti-racist NBA? You're going to need to make me the starting point guard of the Lakers. I mean, it's a horrible idea, but I guess you'll need to slot me in. I am the appropriately tinted shell of skin. Next step, in order to comply with Kendi's anti-racism, we're going to need you to reopen your internment camp. A couple years ago, in a desperate search for the next Yao Ming, the NBA set up a basketball training camp in Xinjiang, China. That's also the area where the Chinese government established a vast network of vocational training centers for the Uyghurs, a Muslim minority population. Yeah, like vocational training centers. The kinds with point systems measuring your political loyalty to the central government. <laughs> centers that might sterilize you against your will and force you to renounce your religion. These are actually massive internment camps. NBA is like, great, we'll share Wi-Fi. And what we're trying to do with these academies is put those kids in positions and situations where they're going to continue to be able to develop. The NBA's academy ended up imposing some uh, internment camp style discipline with grown men blasting basketballs at kids' faces at point blank range, kicking 14 year olds in the stomach for screwing up dribbling drills. After the revelation of these abuses, the NBA quietly shuts the Xinjiang Academy down. Wait, wait, judging foreign cultures? That's racist. To be anti-racist is to see all cultures in all their differences as on the same level, as equals. There are no objective moral standards. To be anti-racist is to reject cultural standards. Cultures aren't inferior or superior, they're just different. When we see cultural difference, we are seeing cultural difference. Nothing more, nothing less. Judging internment camps is racist, I guess. The NBA has no grounds for judging Chinese cultural practices, even when they traumatize 12 year olds. Shutting down the academy was an act of racism. We gotta open that baby back up. And 
So there you have it. Anti-racist NBA, three easy steps. Now it's, uh, it's up to the league to, to do the work. Someone who's being anti-racist will change, will confess. Thank you very much for, uh, for sharing uh, this evening with me tonight. You know, you can't really get tired during the NBA Finals. And for those of us who are doing racial justice work, you know, these last five months, it's almost like we've been in, in the NBA Finals, you know, the whole time.